Okay, that should be enough. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing this fine? Well, for me, it's evening. So, evening for me. Uh, maybe not so much for everybody else. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a uh, short stream today. Hold on, I'm trying to find... Where did I... I somehow... Oh, is it in here? Yeah, there it is. I had all my stuff set up to be able to post very quickly. And of course I got lost on one of these many, many, many Discord things that I'm in, but I have found it. So I am doing my quick posts here. And then I think I've covered everything. Have I covered everyone? Yes. Get on Discord. All right. Let's jump over to the other social avenues. Wait, let me make sure this is streaming, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, just checking. Just had to make sure. Boy, what a, you know, uh, I one of the things that I look forward to every year that I just absolutely love is when Adobe Max happens. It is always such a creatively supercharging event. And uh, this year was no different. I always, always, you know, I always have this... I, I think, oh, yeah, all right. You, you just want to... When you... When you for anybody who doesn't know what Adobe Max is, Adobe Max is essentially the company's, what they call a, uh, there we go, I'm going to repost that. Did I repost that? I did. The Adobe's big creativity conference where basically they generally, it's almost like their version of an Apple event where they typically release all the new versions of their apps and they you know announce things that are coming and you know new improvements and then there's generally a kind of sneak preview of things that are coming up and it, it's it always always is one of my favorite things in the year because i always just get so creatively charged up from it did i just re post my own thing whatever who cares i don't know how i, I i'm i'm off x so much now i barely even open it for anything um, so I don't even remember how it works, to be honest. Uh, okay, that's everything. That's enough. Anyway, I love Adobe Max. It's great because, um, like I said, it just feels like such a, uh, a renewal of kind of wanting to create and wanting to do things. And I'm always just kind of supercharged. And, and I think many people, <laughs> many people have this that, that attend, uh, whether it's in person or virtually, I attended virtually this year. Um, which I, you know, I knew I was going to, and you just end up wanting to do every single thing you can do with any Adobe app. But I know there's people who don't like Adobe. That's fine. Um, there's lots of people who don't like Adobe and I, I understand where that comes from. I'm not, I don't blame people. Adobe does, there are things Adobe does that I don't think are great. I think their pricing model is, I think it's unfortunate the way that they have decided to price their stuff. That said, I've been, I've been an Adobe user virtually my entire creative life. I mean, not my entire creative life, but a lot of it. I mean, it was, I was introduced to Adobe Photoshop on version, I think two or three when I was in high school. I'd have to look up what, what, what year are the versions? I could tell you, cause I can never remember if it's two or three. I always conflate it with uh, AIM. Cause I know I was, I was on AIM and AOL Instant Messenger back when that started <laughs> uh, but that was from version one so that wouldn't even count uh, let me see let me see when the versions when i would be when i would have been in high school i don't think it was senior year but i, I want to just trying to see here i'm curious versions let me see what the adobe photoshop versions have been i know there's a place that has them all here we go okay it was created, uh, yeah, well, not, I was not on it in 1987. I'm very, very sure of that. Let's take a look at the versions here. Version history. Okay, version three. I would bet it was version three. That would be 94. And I graduated, in, yes, it would be, yeah, so version three. So that's when I started with it, 90, uh, because version three was 94. Version two, I mean, it's possible I used two. That could be the school, the high school may not have had the most current version. So it could have been two just because three came out in 94 doesn't mean that the school actually had it. But whatever the case, it was version two or three. 
And so I've, I've my, my most, again, of my really serious creative life. I mean, I was drawing and stuff before Photoshop existed. Obviously I, I was, but it's, it's a different thing when you, you know, I, so I very, very vividly remember, what is this? Well, where is this? Where is this? Oh, did I actually move something there? Okay. I probably did. I very much remember playing with Photoshop and, you know, realizing what it could do and what, what it's so hard to put it in. Cause we're also, if you're, if you're under a certain age, this doesn't, this isn't me saying, Oh, you kids just don't know how hard it was. It's not one of those type of things. Although I guess it could sort of seem like that, but it, it's, it's very commonplace. I mean, phones now do it. Phones can, can do all this digital stuff where you can, you know, magic eraser, for example, on the, on the pixel phones, right? I mean, that this is not really that extraordinary to most people anymore because we've become very accustomed to photo manipulation, image manipulation. It's such a common thing now, but that was not always the case. And so Photoshop, it was, it was a wild thing at that time. I re I remember, you know, when I was creating, oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Sorry. I need to be here. There we go. Oh, by the way, we're continuing our color work on Shodan. So there's the full image. Let's jump into it. Um, but I remember being in a classroom and, and, you know, we were messing with these things and it was just so, I mean, basic, basic stuff, not at all really convincing. It was more of just the idea that you, I mean, it, it, at the point when I was using it, the interesting thing was the compositing, the fact that you could take very different images and just, you know, put them together. And it's not that they looked seamless, but it was just how easy it was that you could take a computer and you could take photos and you could recolor them and you could, you know, cut parts of them out. And a lot of it was very, very rudimentary stuff. Nothing again, that today anybody would really be impressed with, but there was nothing like that at the time. I mean, it was such a, it was such a wild thing. Again, it, it's very hard to, to, to explain it properly because people now are so used to this stuff. It is such a commonplace thing. Again, magic eraser. You know, I, I don't know that the iPhone has it, but certainly the Pixel phones do. And it's just something now that you're used to. Oh yeah, you, you can, you know, if you took a photo and there's somebody in the photo, you can just get rid of them. That's, I mean, number one, there weren't cell phones like there, there are today either. When I was using this thing, cell phones, they existed, don't get me wrong, but they were not, every single person I know didn't have a cell phone. It was not like now. Most of the students in my high school that weren't, you know, rich, but most students did not have cell phones, just did not have cell phones. It was not a commonplace thing. Now it is. And the compute power on the early cell phones. I mean, you were lucky if you could get it to play. I remember my first cell phone could play space invaders and that was wild. Oh, it could play space invaders and snake. And that's as much as it could really do. You know, these were not really powerful devices. I mean, not even, not really. They were not powerful devices. They, they were primarily communication devices. They were phones first and computing devices. And you'd have to put the word computing devices in gigantic quotes uh, that, but that was a secondary function. They were not, you were not buying a cell phone to use it. I mean, they had things like, um, you know, uh, calendars and stuff like that. But again, they were very basic. It was very, very simplified stuff. It was certainly nothing, nothing like what you have now. It is such a different world in that way where computing devices now are so, or your cell phone as a computer is so powerful. It really is. I'm trying to get this line right. Yeah, that's too thick of a cable. Ooh, that, that's good. I got it. Uh, and at the time, like I said, it, it, was, it was exciting that you could play Space Invaders on it. I mean, my first cell phone was a Kia Sera of some kind. And it, it basically was a... It didn't even have a color screen. It was kind of like a blue, blue with black text. That's, that was the color that you could get. That was it. Uh, but again, at the time, just like most things, it was amazing when I had it. I remember that phone was great. Um, and I used it for a lot of, a long time. And then, you know, uh, I remember the first droid phone coming out. That was a big deal. I had the first Motorola droid, uh, the black and gold one, which was a beautiful color scheme. I love that black and gold Motorola uh, scheme. That was great. It wasn't a great phone, you know, especially in a modern context. But at the time, again, it was amazing. 
it was just such a stunning thing. And of course, the, the first iPhones. I never had any of the first iPhones. They were always too expensive for me. You know, whereas the Droid phones I could afford. Um, you know. But again, I've been using Photoshop. So anyway, the, the, the very long version of what I'm saying here is that I've been using Photoshop for so long that I think for me, I'm, I'm able to overlook some of the stuff that other people aren't. And that's not to say that there are not great Photoshop alternatives. There absolutely are. There are many, and a lot of them are free. And for most people, the alternatives that exist will do everything they'll ever need. Most people are not doing advanced photo editing. That's the other thing is, you know, it's, it's not as if most people need Photoshop. Most people don't. And that's not because I'm saying, oh, yeah, the, the peasants who are doing simple work. It's not that. I'm saying that most people just do not ever have to use Photoshop or that the, the type of power that Photoshop gives you. But when you do need it, or if you're just used to having that, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that my uses of Photoshop are all as powerful as legitimate illustrators who are working every day and, and doing that work. But I tell you, it's tough when you ain't got it. It's very hard to have a tool. Did I miss? Oh, I missed line three. Look at that. I missed one. Where's the line three color? That's not, where's line three? Is that the purple? It is. It is very tough to go from having a tool to not having a tool. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I will absolutely cop to the fact that I'm overlooking a lot of this stuff. You know, it's also because I can afford it and because I get a discount on it uh, through my work. So if I didn't have those things, would I still have Photoshop? I don't know. I might not. But since I do, I have it. And, you know, if it ever comes to the point where I can't afford it, then I will not have it anymore. <laughs> It'll be that simple. Sorry, I didn't mean to cough on the mic. Um, you know, that's that that would I would figure out pretty quickly how to use a different tool. I'll just say it like that. I would figure it out. But right now I, I have no problem. And, and whatever your problems may be with Adobe, it is pretty tough to deny that they have, much like Apple does with their ecosystem, Adobe has really, I think, smartly, wait, am I on the right layer? Hold on, I may have been on the wrong layer here. No, no, I'm on the right one. Adobe has wisely created a very, very tight ecosystem where, you know, their stuff all kind of works together and you become used to that. And I criticize that on Apple, I absolutely do. I think that is one thing I don't like about Adobe. Although, unlike Apple, again, because I'm trying to be as objective as possible here, I don't think Adobe's lock-in is on the same level as Apple. You can just use one Adobe app if you want. You can do it. You could just buy, well, I guess it's Photoshop and Lightroom. I guess they're a pair. But you could just get that one. Or I think they have a thing where you can select apps, I think. I want to say they do. Wire 4, yes. So they are not as bad as Apple, but they definitely push that advantage. Now I noticed that they had announced in the uh, in the Max, several of the Max sessions were very, very quick to point out that, you know, whereas before their Firefly generative machine stuff was, I think, unlimited, now they're starting to put limits on it. And so, I you know, that's obviously to get people to buy it. That's to get people to convert because they are making a lot of their tools free. I think Photoshop on the web might be free. Uh, they announced Illustrator on the web, you know, so there's that stuff. And I'm sure what they're thinking with the generative credits is like many companies, they're betting on generative whatever being where everybody's going to go. And so they want to have a piece of that. And their stuff is it's impressive. Uh, it's, it's got the same problems that all these tools do, honestly, which is that everything does kind of look the same to me. <laughs> it's, it's, it all looks samey. Uh, that's the one thing about generative stuff that, that is just, isn't impressing me is it all does kind of look the same. And, and I've talked to some other people who are actual illustrators who make money off it and they have agreed with that, that, yeah, it's, it's neat, but it's also not all that impressive because it, it looks like everybody else's product does. 
Um, so I think that is honestly where I think the limitation is going to come in. And I do, I did pay attention very closely to some of the things that Adobe was talking about. And you know, they obviously they're touting the the Firefly Two model as their their realism model. That's the one that you're supposed to. Because there's Firefly One and Firefly Two. I do like the fact that they're preserving Firefly One, which they say is the more dreamy and kind of surrealistic and uh, less less reality based one. I like the fact that they're keeping it in place. I think that's actually very smart because I think there are people who prefer that type of, I mean, the, honestly, of the two of them, that's the one I would use because I would want the more kind of surrealistic and weird looking stuff. But they recognize that there are people who want the realism stuff. And so those people, they've designed Firefly too. Now at some point, I can't imagine, just bear with me a minute, I'm just redrawing this line because it's very, very jittery. I cannot imagine. Hold on. Okay. Let's take a look at that line. Um, I cannot imagine that they're going to maintain parallel products like that forever. So at some point, I would assume that they're going to either. I guess they. I guess they don't have to. They could keep them separate if they wanted to. It just seems odd to me that they would actually do that. But you know, I don't know. They might. They might. They might decide to keep two products and see if that's what they want to do. But I would guess at some point, I don't know when this would be, but at some point they're going to say, okay, we're merging these together. You know, the two models will become one or you'll have an option to toggle something maybe where if you want the dreamier thing, you'll, your prompt will say, do it more in a, a dreamy style. That's a guess. I, I don't know that, but that's, it just feels like they, they wouldn't keep two versions of the product indefinitely. I mean, that just seems weird. Uh, but I like the fact that right now they are, that they're basically allowing people. I mean, maybe they will. You know what? I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that because Adobe is different than say Microsoft or some of these other companies because they're not, they're not using, or I shouldn't say not using, but their focus, that's the right word for it. Their focus is not the same as Adobe's is where, you know, Adobe is clearly geared towards creators and you know, some of these other companies are not. So maybe Adobe will keep it, you know, as two products because they recognize that illustrators and people within the creative spaces may want that, you know, the, the dreamy option, I guess. So maybe they will keep it. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of it will come down to the expense of keeping two models running. I mean, it's not going to be cheap. I, don't, I wouldn't think. I would guess that's going to get pretty expensive, but they also make some good money off their subscriptions. So maybe they'll decide it's worth it. They might, they could, because they, listen, the, Adobe makes money. So have no doubt Adobe can, Adobe could do it, whether they will or not is a completely separate, completely separate question. We'll see. But like I said, the thing that I do like about what they've done is that they've got these two models and Firefly One, the their first gen, is more geared towards, as they call it, dreamy or hallucinatory, surrealistic prompts, which I like because I don't know that anybody else is doing anything like that. I mean, obviously all these companies, I'm sure, I'm sure all these companies have their their different generations stored. I'm sure they're not getting they're not getting rid of them or anything like that. But I don't know that they are actively that they, they have something like this where they're like, well, we want to keep this because it has this particular trait. I don't know that anybody else is doing that. Uh, so I do think that is unique. And I like the fact that Adobe is doing it. <clears throat> Pardon me, I think my throat is a bit dry. You know, I just drank water. So I will be, I will be curious where they go with this thing. And uh, I may be doing a show on this with uh, somebody that's been on the show before, so I'll keep that under wraps for now but i think that might be in the works relatively soon somebody else who i know was paying attention to this stuff and would probably have some opinions on it because i had some observations i i for better or worse at this point now in my life i tend to pay very close attention to some of the stuff that i think general audience is because don't get me wrong i i was paying attention to what adobe was announcing absolutely i was but I was also, am I in the right? Yes, I'm in the right thing. Okay. Is this this? Yes, I gotta do another line there. 
because that line is too jittery for me too. Even though, honestly, I don't even notice it. But I pay attention a lot now to audience reactions to things. And I like to see what the audience seems to think of what's being announced. And in Max's case, there was some interesting stuff that I think felt a little different to me than the past Max's. And if I do talk to this individual, I will be curious on this individual's feeling on that because it definitely felt clear to me that there was a certain type of reaction to certain things that were being said and that the, and I think it was pretty clear if you were watching it live, I mean, I don't think they're going to cut it out. I don't know. Actually, that would be really interesting if they edited some of the stuff out, but I don't think so. I, I don't, I don't feel like that's something Adobe would do. I just don't. I think they, I don't think there's a benefit in them. To, oh, I gotta fix this line. This line's bothering me. This line is really bothering me. I don't, I don't know why I did it that way. You know what? Maybe it's just because it's too, this line is, I don't like the bend of this line at all. I don't, I just don't like it. Maybe it's because I didn't give it enough of a subtlety. I don't like something like, well, I, I don't like that either. See, I just gotta, I gotta curve it right. <sighs> it doesn't feel like I did that very well, though. No, I think I have to do it from this side. Hold on. That's better. Okay. I mean, I'm still gonna have to redo one of these lines, which really sucks to have to redo these after the fact, but that's okay. Um, so, yeah, I will be curious on... Uh, on the reaction. I mean, I, and some of it, just to give you a preview was specifically around when they were talking about some of the, the generative stuff that it could do. And in particular, they were talking about in illustrator, which is a vector based uh, illustration tool, hence name illustrator, that there is the ability they were showing off how somebody, a an artist, she was showing off how, she could design something and then go find some of her own past work and make the system imitate that style on the new thing that she had created. And I noted that the room got very quiet when that was being shown off. And I think that there was some trepidation around that particular application of the feature. I don't know that everybody in the room at the keynote for that was necessarily, or whatever presentation for that, was necessarily as jazzed about it as Adobe was. And even I kind of, I think I physically reacted because I went, whoa, how, how are you going to make sure that doesn't get abused? Because it happens all the time now. It just, it does. You know, you, you does not take any effort to find imitated work. And that's before any of these tools were present. So I don't know. I, re I am really kind of curious how they're going to be able to govern that. Because that's a tough thing. You know, when you're, and that is something where even more than, let's say, the subscription prices, which a lot of people, I think, naively believe that, you know, that people won't pay them and they will, they are going to keep paying them. I mean, I'll tell you right now, as long as it doesn't, I mean, look, they doubled the cost tomorrow. I'd really have to think about it, but I live and breathe Photoshop so much. I just can't, they kind of got me, which is a, a really terrible thing because I complain about that stuff and, and many others do with companies like Apple. But it's also just the truth. They, they, you know, Adobe has me because I'm just so accustomed to using their tools. And I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm definitely not saying that's a good thing. But I'd also be a liar if I didn't just admit that that's the case. I mean, it is. That is the case. Adobe has got me because I'm so used to and. I mean, I, I say this in a very careful way, but I'm so good with their tool. Wait, why is it not the right way? Oh, I'm in the, I'm in the wrong thing. Uh, not that I'm saying I'm some kind of Photoshop professional or anything like that. I'm certainly not. But at the same time, 
I'm pretty proficient with it. Proficient enough. Let's let's put it like this. Because, I, again, I don't want to come off like I'm too arrogant or anything. Because I certainly hope I don't come off that way. But I'm pretty confident that almost everything that I want to do in Photoshop, I can do in Photoshop. And that's where they kind of get you. Because... Not that other tools would be impossible to learn, but most people don't want to relearn a... I mean, Photoshop is not exactly an easy program to learn, so there's almost that aspect of, okay, I put all this time into learning this tool. Now i got to go learn a different tool. You know, there, there is that aspect of it. Um, it's just honesty. It is there. And that's another big thing that they've got going for them, I think, is, is the idea that people have a level of competency in these tools. And so, yeah, you're, you're reluctant to leave it. I'll just tell you, I am. I wouldn't be in a rush to get off of Photoshop if I could afford it, literally and figuratively, because I'm so used to it. I can jump into Photoshop and I can accomplish things in a very short amount of time, not because I'm particularly great at anything, but because I've got enough muscle memory and enough kind of basic tool set training with Photoshop that I know how to do it. I know how to do it quick. You know, I can get you 90% of where we need to be really fast because I've used it for so long. Again, not because I have some kind of, uh, you know, uh, what's the word for it? Savant like command of the, Oh, I am so in tune with artistic programs that they speak to me. It is like music, like reading sheet music. And I understand how to do it. No, it's not even that it's because I've done it for so long. I mean, and, and frankly, some of the ways I do things would probably make actual people who are very good at Photoshop go, oh, God, what is he doing? Oh, what is this idiot doing? I know I do that with Premiere. I can't, I would be horrified if an actual video editor were to see my process in Premiere. It would not, oh, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Most people like in the creative fields and I'm the same way. I'm sure the person wouldn't necessarily tear me apart to my face they would probably try to help me learn a better way to do it but in their mind i'm sure i've watched people do things in photoshop sometimes and they go wow you're and if i'm saying this they, they have to be doing it in a really strange way where i just think you are really making that far harder on yourself than it needs to be i, I don't know that you realize how much more work you're making for yourself right there so if I do that, then I guarantee that actual professionals who do this stuff all day long do it. So, but yeah, I always, I, I, to go back, way back to where this whole rant started, I love Max. Max is great. It, it is such a unapologetic and unique celebration of artistic talent, you know, and some of the, and they get, they generally get really good. Sorry, that's extremely loud. They generally get really good speakers for some of their sessions. Uh, not all, but many of them. And in particular this year, I think the people they had for day two that were in there, I don't know what they called the keynote, but basically where they had several different people that, that came up and spoke. Like they had, um, what's his name? Uh, Aaron Draplin. Is that, I think his name is Aaron Draplin, who's a rather well-known graphic designer. I actually have his book. So he's, he's spoken many times there. Um, they, and, and then they had the, 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 the second, well, I mean, nobody was bad. I shouldn't say it that way, but the one guy who's, I think his company's name is Oak. I don't know if his name is Oak as well, but he was, he was, I believe he's a musician or at least he can play a keyboard for sure because, but he was showing stuff off in logic, which is their sound thing. And he was, I'm pretty sure he's actually a musician. I mean, I, I'd be very surprised if he wasn't because he was talking about, you know, making a track with a singer and he was making a music track on stage. So I'm, I, I'm not saying that's all he does, but he certainly was a musician or is a musician. And his talk was, I thought, very, very good. And then the person who I believe preceded him, I want to say, I also really liked because one of his big messages was that he doesn't have a lot of followers. He doesn't have millions of people viewing his stuff. And yet here he is on the Mac stage because he's, you know, put the work in and, you know, I always find that stuff to be the best out of all of it. All the technology of course is very neat because I'm into tech and I like that stuff. And 
and I'm certainly, I mean, I'm doing this on an iPad Pro. Obviously, the tech is important to me, and I use it in the creative process. But what Max does best for me as somebody, and I was, I'm also very grateful that they let you still attend virtually for free because they don't have to. They could and probably will start charging for the virtual stuff as well. Um, but I, I really love just hearing people who are so enthusiastically into being artists. I, I, that is the, without even any question, the most exciting thing about Max is just to, to hear people. And that is one thing I do miss because I've gone to them. I've gone to Max in person. I want to say three times. I went to the San Diego one, which is by far the best one that I've ever gone to. I mean, I, I'm certainly not like people who've gone every year. There are people who've gone every year. Um, and I think I went, did I go to one in Las Vegas? I want to say I went to one in Las Vegas and then I went to one in LA and I, and I've said this before, so I don't want to belabor the point too much, but I am not a fan of Los Angeles as a city. It's just not for me. I, I find it very depressing and Las Vegas. So I mean, it's just LA. And I know there's lots of beautiful places in LA. I've, I've been there a few times. And I have, in fact, been in the rich part. So, yes, it's very pretty, although completely inaccessible to somebody like me who is not rich or a celebrity of any kind. So that somewhat kind of falls flat for me when people are like, whoa, Beverly Hills, man, look at all these beautiful houses. Like, yeah, but so what? I can't go to any of them. I can't afford to buy any of them, and I can't go into any of them. So what the hell? Do, yeah, what do I care? Yeah, it's a big house. It's very pretty. It's got a nice pool. So what? Doesn't, doesn't have any impact on me. But in any event, the one thing that is great about being there that virtual doesn't quite recapture, although it does a pretty good job, I have to say. It, they, they, again, that goes to the speakers they get. They get good people to talk. But being there, when you're around other creative people, other creative individuals who are just all there, it's, it's and I am not a social person. I'm not. I, I'll tell you right now, I'm not a very social individual. I, I function very badly in social situations. I am heavily antisocial in many ways. I am the, the exact, you know, they, they talk about people who become like wallflowers. Like I dissolve into the background when there's more than a few people around. I just, it's social anxiety or whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, I got it. And so I don't, I do not do well in large groups and crowds. So when I've gone to max, it's not like I'm running around talking to everybody and I'm bubbly and effervescent and very social. It's not, but even just being around those people, even if I don't feel like I can necessarily go up to these people and talk to them, but you still get this, there's this radiance that comes off these people. That is so great because it is, I, it's, it's hard for me to, to, to put it in the proper words, but there is this creative spirit that, that I guess just comes off of, of people, of creators. And it's such a beautiful thing to be around. It really is. I mean, I, I, I strive to have even a part of that when I do these streams. And when I tell, you know, at the end of my streams, if you've come to some of these streams, at the end of the streams, I say, go create, go be around creativity, go be, you know, that's what I'm trying to emulate, but I don't have any of the, but there's a, there's a base level of that I'm missing that, that would allow that to be better. But I try to do that. And that's because that's partially what I have experienced at Max and have really loved about it is there is that thing where you're around these people and there is this kind of creative energy that comes off them, even just kind of, and this is going to sound terrible the way I, I use this word, but it's really not, you know, just eavesdropping, which is again, it's, I'm saying that, but it's not like I'm sitting there, you know, like a predator, but you kind of just listen to these people and you listen to them talk about, you know, what they do and jobs they work on and people they get to work with. And there's always a level for most of them. I mean, everyone that, that I remember hearing and overhearing at a max was, there's always this base level of just enthusiasm about being able to do this kind of work. And it's, it's kind of like when I talk about the magic cards and I tell people, I'm like, it's just, it's wild. It's wild to, to know that even in my limited, you know, expo not exposure, but involvement, you know, it's not like I'm, 
I haven't done, you know, there are magic artists who have done cards for years and years. I mean, they are known as legendary artists within the magic community. People whose stuff is so well known and so associated with magic in general. And, you know, I'm not anywhere near those people. Those people, they exist on their own plane, basically, right? Then again, kind of like the one guy was saying at Max, then again, my cards are in those packs too. And it, it's it's never, well, I shouldn't say never. Never is a big word. I hope, I'll say it like this, I hope there's never a point where I don't appreciate that anymore. I don't think there will be. I think I, I spent so much of my artistic life. Where is that sound? That line doesn't look good to me. I don't like those lines. Actually, well, let's just do this. I'm going to redo these lines. I spent so much of my professional, <laughs> there's a word I'm using very loosely, artistic life as a failure that I don't think I will ever lose the appreciation for even temporary minor success. I guess that's the way to put it. I think that, that often is the thing is when you don't experience something like that, it's kind of like people who they talk about older people who lived through the depression and how those people, even when they have plenty of money and can afford to spend, they won't, they won't do it because they lived through the depression and that, that experience of not having which honestly most people should have to experience most people should have to understand what it is to not have money to, to actually be genuinely concerned that you will not be able to eat because i think it would make a lot more people a lot more aware and i include myself in this you know on the one hand i had a very very lucky and privileged childhood because i never had to worry about shelter clothing or food never Never had to worry about it. I mean, I don't know if my parents ever worried about it, but I never saw it. There was never a point where I had any understanding that there might not be money for something. You know, if I needed sneakers or I needed a jacket or whatever, those things were always there. That is not the experience for everyone in the world. It absolutely is not. And if everybody had to know what it was to not have, then, wow, what did I do there? Why would I have done that? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll fix it. Then I think, you know, we'd be much better off. Is that, wait, that can't be the same line. No, 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 no. I screwed that up. I see what I did. I screwed that up. I'll fix that right now. That should not be like that. It should not be. But that's, you know, the whole concept of if, if you understood what it was to be in somebody else's life who didn't have, then you would have a greater appreciation of the things that you do. It's, just, it's a very, very core concept. I'm not... I'm not breaking ground on something that's, oh, you know, it'd be a good idea if everybody had to experience what it was to not have things. They'd have more appreciation. Yeah, no kidding. It's almost obvious, except the problem is it's really not. That, that's the issue, is it's not as obvious as you think. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, so it's the same idea. That people who grew up poor or had to worry about where money came from, they tend to be much better, tend to be. It's not a universal rule. Nothing is. But many of those people you find are more thrifty in what they spend. They are more appreciative of the fact if they have money now that they have money. And if you look on the other side, many people who grew up only knowing wealth and comfort, they tend to not see it as much. I mean, I, I, I'll just be honest. I have that problem with some things. I try not to. The... the the one thing I like to say about myself, and I don't give myself very many compliments, as anybody who knows me would absolutely back up, but one thing I try to do, I really try, is to be aware of my blind spots, is to be aware of those places where, you know, I fall into the, the things that I, that I often criticize others for and not pretend that they don't apply to me, not pretend that somehow I'm better than so if you think that I don't have those same blind spots as a result of the fact that I grew up, again, never having to worry about having a home or having food or having shoes or any of the basic things that people, that a lot of people just take for granted. Yeah, of course I have those blind spots. And I catch myself doing that, right? I, you know, 
where I, I know that there is there that there is a that growing up the way I did. Same thing with people. You know, my parents never divorced. There are many people who had very terrible experiences where. <coughs> sorry, I didn't mean to cough in the mic. I apologize. I came up out of nowhere. But I know people whose parents divorced, and it was a very terrible experience because, you know, some some adults will divorce. And they make sure that they don't make the kids a part of it. And they are very careful to make sure that the, you know, that, that the child doesn't think that they're part of some kind of back and forth, like a battle between them. They don't become, it's not custody battles, that type of thing. I know many people who may not like the person they used to be married to much anymore, but they make a very serious and, and many times impressive effort to make sure that that never gets moved past them and to their children. And I have a lot of respect for that. That is, I don't know. I know, I know how I am about certain things and that might be tough for me to do. So when people do that, I'm always impressed by it. I sit there and go, man, that these are people who really love their children because they've been, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not, this is not to excuse, you know, nobody should be putting up with abusive scenarios. That's not what I'm getting. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about people, two people, who just realize, you know what, we're not in love anymore, but rather than make this a, a complete nightmare for our kids, we may not like being in the same room anymore, but we're gonna make sure that our kids always understand that they're loved and that they're not part of this. I know a lot of people who've done that, and it can't be easy, cannot, and they've done it. And so that's another thing. My parents stayed together until, well, until my dad died, honestly, so it was till death did them part. So my experience of parenthood and, uh, and having two parents is radically different than people who, whose parents did not stay together. And so, and may have had a very bitter acrimonious divorce and maybe their parents didn't prioritize the fact, you know, their, the kids as much it happens. It's sad, but it happens. Wow. That wire is really warped. Why is that wire so weird? I don't understand what happened on some of these things. I mean, I'll fix it. It's fine. But geez, what, what went on here? Yeah, that should not be that thick. I must have corrected this line and not realized. Because that shouldn't look like that. Just should not look like that. You know? Yeah, this line is really off. Or, well, I guess it's not terribly off, but it is off. Like this part's too thick down here, I think. There we go. Um, so that, yeah, I, I really try to know what my blind spots are. Oh, not always good at it. I'm not gonna pretend again. I don't want to come off like I'm somehow I'm enlightened and I'm smarter than everybody and I understand things. No, it ain't. It ain't that. Believe me when I tell you, it ain't that. I don't. I don't honestly know where it comes from, but. At some point, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. Something flipped in my brain that went, huh, you know what? I need to really pay attention to myself because I, I don't want to be like people that I know that are, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I was just around enough people who acted like that. And I went, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be somebody who's not at least somewhat self-aware of their flaws. Doesn't mean I won't have them. Doesn't mean I don't have them. I have a ton, but it is, it's just, I guess just uh, something made me have a sh perspective shift. I really don't know what, and it's that same thing with, you know, that's one of the things I love most about Max is that I, I you know, you don't generally, there are, I'm sure, I'm sure there are other art conventions where artists get together and I know that there are artist groups and all stuff, but it's, I think it's the scale of it. You know, it's kind of like, um, I don't know, what's a good comparison for it? I guess it's, you know, where, where lots of countries, they launch satellites. Oh, here, yeah, that's a good example. So yeah, oh, okay, well, there's going to be a satellite launch. Oh yeah, watch the little satellite. Satellite goes up into space. Oh, that's neat because you know space flight and of any kind is tough. And so yeah, no, well, it's cool. They do that space flight. Then they do a mission where they're sending a crew to Mars, and that's a completely different animal. I mean, it's it's just something where you're glued to it, and you're like, wow, this is, you know, the space flight thing is great, but this is this is sending people to Mars. This is amazing, and that's what Max is from a creative perspective. 
that's for me anyway that's what it is where i look at it, i'm like yeah you know there, there's things where artists get together and support each other and all that stuff and that's all great it's all great i try to do that myself i try to you know i try to follow artists who don't have a lot of people following them and i try to be supportive of art in any way that i can i, I do all that stuff but then you get to something like max and it's just it's a completely different thing and it's just I wish there was an Adobe Max every month. I wish there was one like that. Something that had that level of kind of just creative enthusiasm and I don't know. You know, it's just it's like it's it's like Christmas for some people is that's that's what Max is for me. Max is my Christmas where I it never lasts long enough and I can't wait until it happens again. You know? It's great. It's great. And I'm sure that, you know, that somebody will say, well, for somebody who's so cynical, it's interesting that you don't understand that all that benefits Adobe and that, you know, it gets people to, to want to use their products. I understand that. I just don't care. I just don't care because for me, their products are worth it. So I'm going to use them anyway. So I don't really care. But yes, of course, there's a benefit to Adobe. I'm not, I'm not blind to that. But most of the people who are at Max are not working for Adobe. And honestly, listen... Wait a minute. Oh, my thing's not sharing. I'm sorry. I just realized that. Sorry, let me get it back. I just realized it. I hope it just quit. Jeez, I wonder how long it's not been there. Oh, I feel really bad if it's been for a while. Oh, boy. Sorry. I was, I was so wrapped up in what I was saying, I wasn't paying attention. I mean, it's around yeah, 45 minutes. That's usually when it happens, so I'm not, I'm not overly shocked. But sorry about that. Really good at this streaming thing. That's me. Where was I? You know, if, if they came to me and wanted me to be an Adobe evangelist for Photoshop, I probably would be because I genuinely love it. You know, my biggest problem is that they probably want me to never say anything negative about the stuff that Adobe does in terms of their pricing. And I don't know if I could do that. So, I mean, I probably could because I, I don't think it's not worth it. I just wish that they, and I guess they do with, oh, sorry, a bunch of emails just shot into my thing. Oh, somebody shared my art stream. Thank you, Monica Rose. Appreciate that. That's very nice. I always post them in 80 places and I never expect anybody to look at them, so that's always nice when somebody does. But yeah, there, there, are, there are times where I wish that Adobe would do a little bit more to let people use their, because I do think their tools are great. And other tools are rapidly closing the gap that that Photoshop used to command, and I'm sure some of their other stuff. I know a lot of people love. I'm not enough of a video editor to know, but I know that DaVinci Resolve is that what it's called? Is what most you know, a lot of video editors who are anti Adobe, and there are people who hate Adobe in the same way that there are people who hate Apple, and you know it's just that that level of disgust for them. Um, and I I do you know what actually the one thing I think Adobe should do I don't think they do any well. I don't think they all offer standalone software anymore where you can just buy a permanent license to something. I don't think they do. If there's one thing I would, I would want them to go back to, it's that idea of a permanent license because, you know, circumstances change, right? Right now, I can afford the Adobe monthly subscription. Oh, my dog is giving me a look. Yes, I'll, I'll feed you shortly. Don't worry. I know you're there. I'm just about done because um, I just want to finish these this coloring out. I can afford it. I, I could get laid off tomorrow and that could change. And it would it would honestly really be terrible not to not to be able to use Photoshop anymore. But there's no guarantee that that won't happen at some point. And would I want to be able to save for a while and buy a permanent, you know, a per, you know, perpetual license or a permanent license to Photoshop that's local that doesn't require a a subscription yeah i would i absolutely would and i don't think they have that anymore i'm pretty sure they've now gotten rid of all of it they did for a while they had you know either or it was subscription or i think photoshop for a while was a was a standalone product i think there might have been a couple other ones too but it, photoshop was the big one um and i'm sure they would say oh piracy that's why we stopped doing it which you know Piracy, just like 
save the children or protect the children is going to be used as a defense for anything. I don't know that it's actually really true. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I were to sit here and tell you I never pirated Photoshop my entire life, I would be a liar. I would be a huge liar. But, honestly, I couldn't have afforded it when I was pirating it. That's just the truth. I would not have been able to afford Photoshop, and I would never have used it if I couldn't have pirated it a long time ago. And because I was able to pirate it, and this is going to sound like a weird justification, and I'm not necessarily saying it's a good one, but I look at it and go, you know, if I hadn't been able to pirate it, I probably wouldn't use it today because I wouldn't have become as versed in it. Now, I'm not saying that as a way to try to justify piracy. I'm really not. I'm just saying that I don't think in my case, if I couldn't have used, you know, cracked versions of it back when you could do stuff like that, I don't know that I would have used it as much as I did. And I don't, I mean, I would have used it in school because they had it in school because I was lucky to go to a school that could have it. You know, I went to a fairly nice high school. So there again, I, it was a benefit of the fact that I could go to that school. I'm sure there were many other children and kids and people who went to schools that couldn't afford that stuff, you know, that were just barely trying to keep the heat on, let alone having Photoshop subscriptions or, you know, well, it was not called Creative Cloud back then. So again, that's just a, that I was lucky. And I had a teacher who was very on top of that stuff. And she made sure that we all used this software and that we knew what it was and got at least basically proficient with it. Again, not the same situation that a lot of people have. So I got very lucky. In many ways in my life, I've been extraordinarily lucky. So would it be good that there was if there was a way for people who aren't so lucky to still be able to use Photoshop, would it not benefit Adobe in the long run to let people buy discount? I mean, just like everything in life, you know, it, 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 there should be more of a, whether this is really feasible or not, more of an attempt to, I don't know, work with people, I, I, something. I don't know where I'm really, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase it properly, but I just look at it and, in Adobe's case in particular, I think there, that there is a segment of the market that they foolishly cut themselves out of. And as other alternatives become better, at some point I wonder if they won't go back to having some kind of, I don't think they'll ever dump a subscription necessarily, but I wonder if there won't be that maybe a standalone or a more inexpensive I guess reduced version. I guess Photoshop on the web. I think that might actually be free. So maybe that's what they're doing as a... Oops, I colored the wrong thing, didn't I? I sure did. Oh, that's... I put the X in the wrong spot. Did I? Hold on. Mm, yes, I did. Okay. I don't know what I did there exactly. I'll have to figure that out. Anyway, not a big deal right this second. So I don't know. We'll see. I got, I got all wrapped up in a tangent about Adobe pricing when what I was trying to talk about was the fact that I absolutely love Adobe Max. Love it. Love it. My problems with Adobe's pricing aside, it never, ever, ever fails to be just very creatively energizing to, to even to remotely attend Max when you just hear people talking about the way they create. And there's so much diversity, not only in the people, but in the way that they make things. You know, they were showing off. There were two people who were who were doing one of the sessions, and one of them, she paints with robots. And the other guy is a British Nigerian who's very into very bright and, you know, poppy colors. And his studio looks like almost like a, a kid's playroom. And it was so neat because these, these people, in terms of their creative works the way that they did things and their subjects could not have been more different and yet the unifying thing was the fact that they were creators and they created in these really interesting ways and that stuff is just great i just love it i just love it so yeah i i love adobe max i wish it was more often i really do i think that might be yep okay we are done with the wire four colors good timing good timing because oh and my thing just crapped out so you know what that's fine i'm going to just go back to this there we go because it's decided it doesn't want to work with me anymore 
thanks. Reflector, I guess. Anyway, now that I've gone on for a while about Adobe Max and how wonderful it is, you can actually attend it free, at least this year. There's not much of it left, I don't think, but you can. I hope they keep some free, even though it's more limited. There's not as many sessions, obviously. They want you to go in person, and it's not cheap. Um, but I hope they do keep a free component permanently, because I really think it, it's, it's a very exciting thing. So... Anyway, I have to go feed my dog now before she bores holes in the back of my head by staring at me. So thank you. Yes, she's getting up. I don't know if you can hear that, but she's getting up because she heard the word feed. Yeah, I, I'm working on it. Thank you for stopping by and listening to me get all sappy about Max because I love it so much. And uh, yeah, so as I always say, go experience some creativity or be creative yourself if you can. Uh, go watch another channel where somebody's drawing or playing music or doing something. It's good for you. Go do it. And thank you for watching this, whether it's live or later. It doesn't matter to me. I just appreciate the fact that anybody watches at all. And we'll talk to you on the next stream. Until then, take care.